when you do an activation, there's a lot more happening than you probably think because you're yeah. looking at it only from a, well, am I seeing something? Am I feeling something or sensing it? But your spirit is engaging. So your yeah. spirit will be engaging in that activation. And then your spirit has that experience as a foundation for everything else in your life. If you're led by the spirit, then those experiences are part of what then informs and leads your life. Even if yeah. you don't have it directly as a cognitive experience, you're mm -hmm. still engaging in it and still has the benefit of it. So you still benefit, even though you might not feel that you're able to to, to see everything in a cognitive way. Um, if you struggle cognitively in the sense of being able to picture something or sense something or feel something, then, you know, I, I will always start on something really simple. Yeah. And just practice training your senses. See, most people have not really learned to open the eyes of their heart. So mm -hmm. you have three sets of eyes. You've got the eyes of your body. So the, the thing that receives actual information uh, from the outside, which is just reflected light, that eventually ends up as an electrical impulse in your brain. Mm -hmm. And your brain has learned to interpret the impulses um as as images you know because it's designed to do so the optic nerve sends the information the brain interprets the information and you can see but you're not actually seeing with your eyes you're seeing with your brain your eyes mm -hmm. are just picking up the information it's your brain that interprets it and mm -hmm. actually in your brain that information is all upside down because of the way your lenses work so your brain can actually turn it the right way up for you. <laughs> but you you didn't in one sense you didn't do anything for that ability it's programmed within your sort of basic functions of your body um mm -hmm. but you did learn to interpret what the images are in your brain as pictures in your mind you know from what you're seeing so we've all learned that when you're when you're a baby first off for, for the first few months you can only see about 10 inches in focus because your your eyes have not yet learned to actually focus so you can only see about 10 inches as you as you grow your eyes uh, your lenses are become more focused and so you can see a bit further and eventually you can see you know so unless you've got an eye problem then you can see normally wherever else but a baby has to learn to interpret the information. So you learn what's your mother's face like initially, because that's the person you're yeah. going to to. And then you learn the sounds and you learn the voices. But you, first of all, you can't associate the voices with the picture unless that is actually within the focus range. So eventually your focus gets a little bit further, four or five feet then you can see people around you when they're close enough. So you've learned all that, you know, and your brain receives that information, stores it in the hippocampus because it's information you are going to use throughout your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it stores baseline information. And then when, let's say you're looking at something, you'll learn what the color is. As a child, you, you know, your parents teach you what colors are. So then you associate that in your brain with the name red, green, blue. But you didn't really know that they were red, green, blue until someone told you that they were red, green and blue. And no one knows what you're actually seeing. Because I can't see what you're seeing in your head. You know, mm -hmm. so you might be seeing a totally different shade from me. And people who are colorblind struggle with the green, red sort of spectrum so that you don't know what people someone else is seeing. You say, well, this is green. You know, well, what green are you looking at compared to what green am I looking at? We don't know. But our yeah. brain sort of assimilates or everything that's needed. Now, in the spirit realm, the same thing needs to take place. We need to learn to see. So initially, our spiritual focus, the eyes of our heart, which is our the imagination screen within our brain. So let's say you see things on a screen your imagination is also a screen. 
so okay. you can receive pictures or dreams in you so when you dream you're not seeing something with your natural eyes your soul is projecting an image into your mind that is a dream now you don't have to learn how to dream because you it just happens or doesn't happen but you need to learn to interpret or to be able to pick up and some people don't remember dreams but when you wake up in the middle of one that moment you wake up in the middle of a dream you can grab that dream if you think about it at that moment mm. if you don't think about it at that moment it just goes but you receive the information in the same place in your mind but you didn't learn to grab it and then engage it and then think about it and it's the same thing with all type of experiences like that so training your senses according to hebrews through practice is what we need to do to learn how to use our imagination or or engage that that eyes of our heart screen and learn to be able to focus on it so that it becomes fixed and remembered so that's why i always give people simple exercises to, to train your imagination you just have to picture something you know so then the simplest thing is a door you know you you have a front door you have a back door you have doors you know those are those are things that you've seen all your life and if you close your eyes and then you engage your imagination by choice to say i'm gonna think about a door and think about your front door think about the color of it now as you keep practicing that you may sense feel see know you know i know what my front door looks like i know what the color is i know exactly what the color is because i know what the name of the color is and i know what that is because i've seen it over and over again i know there's windows glass in it with certain patterns you know it's there's things that i know and i could describe it to you i'm not looking at it right now but it's in my mind because I've seen it every day. I come in and out the door. So I've learned to keep that information within my um, sort of stored information. You know, and, but I look at it every day as I go in and out, you know, and it's stored and therefore I can describe it. And it's the same thing with the eyes of your heart. You learn if you practice to store the information of the things you're thinking about and everyone's imagination works differently because we're all uniquely made so some people it is a very visual thing so if i think of the front door am i picturing it in full technicolor video am i seeing it as an, almost a screenshot or am i getting the impression of the door which is not really fully formed, but I could still describe it because I'm I know what it looks like. All those things can be developed and you can learn to develop your senses to tune into your your eyes of your heart more easily. But it takes practice. Some people are natural seers. Mm -hmm. They find it really easy. They close their eyes. They can picture anything, you know. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's not it's not as easy as that for a lot of other people a lot of other mm -hmm. people don't get the visual thing but they mm -hmm. may get the impression so you know if i close my eyes i'm thinking about the front door you know right now it isn't a fully colored picture in my mind but the impression is there there's a porch there's there's some wood on the right side there are some robins on the left side you know the colors there and the glass and the more i think about it the more focused it becomes in my mind mm -hmm. and the easier it is to describe focus mm -hmm. or then usually it becomes more visual but not always and ultimately it doesn't really matter too much whether it's visual or not it's the information that's important so long as you receive the information that the eyes of your heart are focusing on then that is what's important so if you have an experience with god you may not you know sort of see it as a whole vision but you're receiving something and you just have to learn to focus on what you are to seeing just so that it begins and most of it is perception 
perception yeah. is what really is what we're engaging in and perception is perceiving something so that you can understand it um, and therefore <laughs> anything like that starts with something simple and then when you do an activation and i might be describing you know doing this or doing that or doing the other don't try really hard to mm -hmm. see it because if you try really hard to see it you lose the experience because we strive. Mm -hmm. The thing is to be still, to calm everything down. Don't strive to see, just go with the experience. And once you've had the experience, think about the experience because thinking about the experience helps you to place that experience in your stored memory. Mm -hmm. you know, and that might just be the framework of the experience but then when you go back to that experience again you've already got a framework to build on it's not like you're starting for the first time which is why most experiences need to be repeated uh, quite a lot of times for them to become stored in the memory if you have an experience once you know i mean let's say i went into a hotel once five years later could i describe that hotel probably not because my hippocampus would have shredded the material because mm. there's no need because i've not been back there but mm. if i go into my house every day then i could literally close my eyes and i could navigate around my house because my hippocampus has stored all that information to such a degree i could close my eyes and i could probably walk five or six steps turn left go up two steps and end up at the bottom of the stairs because i've done it so many times it's mm -hmm. actually ingrained in my memory because it's an important yeah. memory let's say there was a fire and the house was full of smoke how would i get out if i didn't know you know because i can't see but my mm -hmm. memory would help me because it's important because it's been repeated over and over again so a lot of uh, exercises need to be done probably 10 times to fully get your whole experience so that that framework it builds on the previous and the previous and the previous and the previous until actually your spirit and your soul are receiving whatever is needed in that exercise it may not be so that you could explain it in a cognitive way but you will have experienced it and that experience will be stored and the impression or the feelings or thoughts of that experience. That's why it helps to meditate on an experience. You know, the meditation is not the experience. It is the mulling over the experience in your own mind while you're at rest, just to draw from the experience things which may come to you as you give yourself the time to meditate. See, I think we, we live in a very instant world which we're designed to get something at a push of a button. Meditation and engaging things don't work that way generally. You know, you may have, I mean, you know, I had an experience once the first time I went into heaven, it was indelibly etched into my mind because it was a out of the ordinary experience that I'd never had before. It was so out of the ordinary, it was imprinted. And I could tell you everything about that experience now, even though it happened in 2008, because I've thought about that experience, I've described that experience, I've talked to other people about that experience over and over and over again over the years. It is part mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. Not all experiences are like that. The usually are, they are the out of the ordinary dramatic experiences get stored because they are so different from normal everyday life generally we have to practice and it takes yeah. quite, a, quite a lot of time and i would say most people are not trained to practice and train and don't have the patience to do it <laughs> yeah mm. it requires yeah. patience you know because you've got to build and build and build until you receive something you know it's like anything you know if someone said to me learn now to knit you know i would have to practice a lot to learn how to knit i know the basics that you have two knitting needles and you sort of tie these things around 
And when I yeah. was a kid, my mum taught me how to knit when I was probably three or four, yeah. but I can't remember any of it. You know, so mm. if I were to have to learn to knit, I would have to probably get some YouTube videos. I'd have to get some pictures. I'd have to, yeah. okay. And I'm not very good at that sort of thing, probably. So yeah. it would probably not be intuitive to me at all. And if I wanted to learn how to do it, I'd have to have quite a vested interest in doing it. There'd have to be a really good reason. And I don't have any good reason to learn how to knit. So I would never probably do it because I have no good reason to do it. It wouldn't benefit me because I probably would not really want to knit something. I'd go and buy it because it's so much easier and it would be so much better than actually my knitting would be, you know, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, you know, Debbie, she she loves crocheting and things like that. And she makes hats and scarves and all sorts of stuff. Okay. She finds it relaxing. You know, for me, it would be like, oh, God, how do I do this? You know, I wouldn't find it very relaxing because I wouldn't be very good at it. If I did practice and I practiced for months, probably I might find it relaxing. But I, the thought of learning how to knit does not fill me with anticipation or desire desire something out of what you do to be able mm -hmm. to persevere through it and it's not always easy finding a comfortable position and, and mm -hmm. feeling relaxed is important to meditation because if your body is like mm -hmm. then you get distracted from what you're doing yeah uh, finding yeah. a spot so for me you know I had, I had a favorite chair which was a reclining chair whenever i sort of engaged with god in that chair i was always in a relaxed position i felt you know, peaceful. I calmed everything down. I sort of dealt with all the thoughts that were in my mind because we have all sorts of thoughts in our mind. What are we going to be doing today? Got this appointment. Going to do that. Got to go shopping. Whatever. And those can be distractions that sort of, you know, close in on our mind and make it harder just to just rest and just let things mm -hmm. happen. And even when you're having an engagement, the idea is not to really try and think hard to see or put a particular agenda on the experience because as soon as you agendaize it you already have an expectation about what it is and that is not a good thing because what if god wants to do something different than your expectation then you can reject what he's doing because it isn't what you want you know so yeah. generally when i engage god i have no expectation and no agenda other than I just hang out. You know, if God wants to do something, well, there might be an occasion where I need to go to the throne of grace and ask for mercy or help in a situation, which is okay because God wants us to share our situations with him and ask for help. But if I just want to be, you know, if you're with somebody, you're not constantly having an agenda in your head unless you do. If you go into the bank and you want some money, you know, then you've got an agenda for that appointment and that visit, which is fine because that's what the purpose is. But if you're with a friend, you're not thinking every second, what am I going to get out of this thing? What am I supposed to do? What's she thinking? How am I thinking? What am I gonna... you, you just you just know that person. Therefore, you're relaxed around them. Mm. And I think relaxing and just being helps the process of opening up and then just keep practicing and build and build and build on yeah experiences you know and i've known people who've done the engaging god program oh i've gone through the whole program i said how long did it take oh three weeks i said well how much did you practice any of the activations well i just did them once so well and mm -hmm. how how's that working for you mm -hmm. well i not very well you know because they just want to race through information without mm -hmm. assimilating the information into experience and that takes time if you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.